Hello class members. Today I want to just spend a little bit of time talking about some of the aspects of the article that you uh, perhaps didn't fully understand as you were reading it. This particular study was published in 2016 and looks specifically at the use of automated essay evaluation scoring in uh, several aspects related to student writing. I think the authors do a really nice job setting up the study and the need for the study, um, looking at the literature that they've identified some gaps uh, within that literature that suggests the importance of conducting their study, specifically that most often the studies that are out there examine or compare results of writing quality of automated essay scoring versus paper and pencil writing, which is different from uh, what they say the reality actually is and what they're studying. So tapping into previous literature, the authors say that they are going to examine both the feedback type provided by teachers and the feedback level. So the feedback type, meaning directive, query, informative, or praise, which are described in the previous section in the document. And then feedback level was kind of parsed into lower level writing skills, spelling, capitalization, and so on, as opposed to higher level writing skills, which relate more to the overall quality of the content as opposed to the simple grammar kinds of things. The authors decided to examine three research questions, and I think the fact that they didn't look only at teacher quality or, or quality of writing was a really positive contribution of their study to the field. So they looked at the, um, the, the two different types of uh, conditions, the one with the automated scoring versus the teacher-only comments. Um, so they looked at the effects of the treatment on the amount, type, and level of teacher feedback on students' writing. Um, they also looked at the effect associated with the condition on the student's motivation to write, and then also the uh, overall condition on quality of writing at the final draft stage. Um, and one of the other things that's unique about this particular study is that they looked not at the essay scoring by itself, but that it was a combined condition where the teacher also contributed feedback, even though the feedback by the software was also being provided to the students. So it wasn't just standalone automated essay grading. It was, stand, it was the essay grading plus teacher feedback as opposed to teacher feedback alone. For the most part, I think the description of the methods used in the study is pretty straightforward. I hope you'll pay attention when they talk about the project essay grade or PEG, uh, the process by which it assigns feedback to students because I think it's actually uh, pretty interesting and taps into some pretty um, complicated computer algorithms in order to provide that kind of feedback. In terms of the measures that were collected, uh, they didn't find or didn't have access to a writing performance measure that could be used to determine whether the groups were similar to begin. But what the authors claimed is that the literature suggests there's a strong relationship between reading and writing performance. So they use student performance on a computer adaptive reading test um, to help determine that the groups were in fact similar to begin. The authors also gave a value to the amount, type, and level of teacher feedback and this was something that they had to code themselves. So they kind of explain here how the coding was done they had uh, the first and second author trained on the coding process 
and their inter-rater reliability, that's the IRR, is calculated using a formula that's pretty standard. It's the total number of agreements that um, they actually had. So if I um, submitted a document and the teachers uh, provided feedback, then the coders gave it a score, and if the coders agreed on that score, that's counted as a yes or an agreement. And if they didn't agree on the score, then that's counted as a disagreement. So it's either a yes or no, they agreed or they disagreed on the coding or, or rating for each um, piece of, for each feedback, piece of feedback that the teacher gave. And so it's the, the inner rate of reliability is the total number of agreements divided by the total possible agreements. So how many times did they agree out of how many possible times could they have agreed? Um, and that then is a, a decimal value between 0 and 1. The higher the value or the closer to 1 that it is, the greater the level of agreement between raters is. And they're, they're obviously hoping for a high level of agreement, which affects the validity of the study overall. So they, they talk about the level of agreement in this paragraph, and it is quite good. Another thing I thought was very strong about the design of the study was that they used two measures to determine the writing quality. One was a value provided by the PEG um, essay scoring software and so it had an overall score and a trait score from that. So the essays that were submitted to Google were then forwarded to the PEG software by the authors so that everybody had a consistent score whether they were actually using the automated scoring or their teacher was providing all of the feedback. And then the holistic quality score was based on the evaluation of two raters that were using a rubric that had six possible outcomes, six criteria. And so the score could be basically a 0 through 12. So each rater had a 0 through 6 that they could assign to the essay. And then the total was what was um, used in the overall study. Um, be sure to read through the procedures that details what was done during the 11 days of the unit. In terms of data analysis, this is a section that a lot of times qualitative, or quantitative studies don't include at all. Um, and in this one, the authors kind of justify why they use certain analyses over others. So uh, one of the things that they talk about is uh, using Mann-Whitney tests instead of the t-test. And, and they talk about that, and I just noticed there's a typo right here. Um, they talk about that in terms of uh, a t-test is normally used to compare the means between two groups. But what they say is that some of the underlying assumptions that are kind of built into the t-test are not met in this particular study. One of the things is that writing motivation was assessed via a Likert scale responses uh, on a survey. So that in and of itself doesn't gather numeric scores. It just gathers uh, a value, uh, basically agreement with regard to certain statements. Um, so they, they justify why they're using the Mann-Whitney instead of the, the t-test, and that kind of continues with regard to the amount of, of teacher feedback. Then we get to the writing quality, and they say that they are going to run the ANOVA, which is analysis of variance, and that is a statistical analysis that's run to compare the means between two or more groups. Um, so that's a pretty standard one. They talk about effect sizes, which is a value that 
reflects the magnitude of the difference between the groups. And um, they talk about controlling for errors. This is probably a little bit more sophisticated that, than I think you need to be aware of, but um, it basically is an indication that the authors are very aware of how their results might be used and interpreted by readers. And by talking about this uh, way of controlling for certain things, it suggests to me that they've really considered the design of their study uh, in in terms of setting things up so that people believe that these results are meaningful. In the results, the first thing that the authors do is tell you that they ran an ANOVA to determine if the group receiving teacher feedback plus PEG feedback was different from the group that just received teacher feedback. And what we see here is that the p-value when they ran it that is greater than 0.05. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. Um, 0.05 is kind of the benchmark that we use to compare statistical results to. So since the p-value is greater than 0.05, what that suggests is that there's not enough information to indicate that the groups are different from each other. Um, if we look at the actual means, uh, one group had a mean of 916, the other group had a mean of 851, um, and these were the reading literacy tests that they took. Um, when we look at those values, it, it appears that one group is higher than the other, but this p-value says, well, even though the, the values themselves might appear to be different, there's not enough information or not enough evidence there to say that it's due to anything other than chance. So we can't say that they're truly different from each other. So I'm going to move to table two. Um, so we have our two groups, the group that received the automated feedback plus the teacher feedback, and then the group that received only the teacher feedback. And what we see, they chose to use the median, which is the the value in the middle, um, and then the range is how much the values, um, well, what is the, the lowest to the highest value within each of these different feedback units. Um, so the man, Whitney, and the R, the, this tells us whether there is actually a difference between this value and this value. So if the authors left that blank, it means there's not enough evidence to indicate that the two values are different from each other. So the first one that we get to where there is a significant difference is in the amount of feedback provided regarding capitalization. So there was more feedback provided by the teacher in the, um, or the, the teacher who only gave feedback, um, not including anything, well, that teacher didn't also have access to the automated scoring. So we have our p-value, which is less than 0.05, and then this indicates that the automated scoring group had less capitalization feedback than the teacher-only feedback group. So that's what the PEG less than Google is. And we can see the values. This is less than this. The R value is the effect size. So it's the magnitude of the difference between this and this. And all of the values that are in this column here are considered to be fairly small. So even though it's a statistically significant difference, when we look at a 0, 0.00 compared to a 0.02, it's, it's not a lot. I mean, it is significant, but it's in terms of the practicality of that value. Um, you know, it's, it's just a relatively small overall effect. So we have some other differences in terms of uh, lower level feedback regarding sentence structure, the automated scoring group, which remember is automated scoring plus teacher feedback, um, there were more, there was more feedback with regard to sentence structure than teacher only feedback. Uh, when we look at formatting, 
this one shows us that there was more formatting feedback given by the teacher only group or in the teacher only group as opposed to the automated scoring plus teacher feedback group and then overall higher level feedback that's why this is bolded and is in that particular row so the overall higher level feedback was greater for students who received the automated feedback plus teacher feedback than it was for the teacher only feedback but then when they parsed it out by the different types of higher level feedback the only one that was significant was in terms of idea development and again the automated plus teacher feedback was greater than that of teacher feedback only. Table 3 tells us whether there are differences with regard to overall writing quality. So we have the means for the students who were in the group receiving automated scoring plus teacher scoring or feedback and the group that had teacher feedback alone. So the ANOVAs, um, what's important here are again the p-values and if we look none of the p-values are less than 0.05 meaning that across all of these different writing quality measures there's no difference based on whether the students received automated plus teacher feedback as opposed to teacher only feedback. Um, and again, these are effect sizes. These happen to all be very small, um, which is expected considering that none of these are significant differences. I find table four to be very interesting as well. It was a survey and uh, recall that there were two teachers in the study and both teachers had one class where they gave feedback only and one class where they gave feedback in addition to the automated scoring. So when we look at their responses um, with regard to the amount of time taken, which was easier to use and so on, it does seem like the teachers had very favorable opinions about the automated scoring um, and combined with the fact that student writing quality wasn't affected negatively, um, certainly, by uh, that particular treatment, <coughs> It does suggest that there are some positive or potentially positive benefits of using automated essay scoring on student writing. So I'm not going to go over all of the results. I expect that you read that and I'll have some questions to have you ponder with regard to the results. Um, but I think the study is very interesting. I think the results are very interesting in terms of implications for teachers. Uh, and I hope that you uh, find this as illuminating as I did.